The Batteries Included podcast is brought to you with United Chargers. United Chargers presents the Grizzly range of EV chargers. There's the original Grizzly Classic, a powerful, heavy-duty, portable EV charging station built to withstand the toughest conditions. The Grizzly Duo, a dual-port unit designed to charge two vehicles at the same time. The Grizzly Mini, a small portable charging station built with an indoor-outdoor rated cast aluminium enclosure. And the Grizzly Smart, a revolutionary smart EV charger. All Grizzly chargers come with a convenient 24-foot cable and the ability to adjust the current from 16 amps all the way up to 40 amps. That's 9.6 kilowatts. Plus, they're IP67 rated. Built in Canada with the highest quality materials. Order yours now at unitedchargers.com. That's unitedchargers.com. Hello and welcome to the Batteries Included podcast. It's March the 8th. Yes. 2024, and this is episode number 27. Thank you very much for joining us. On today's show, we'll be talking about the reveal of the Rivian R2, R3, and R3X, the debut of the Dodge Charger in both EV and ICE flavors, and of course, much, much more. I'm Dominic Gioni. Joining us today is the indubitable Mr. Tom Malogny, Ooh. senior editor at Inside TVs and host of the YouTube channel, State of Charge. We also have the mellifluous Mr. Martin Lee from the EV News Daily podcast, which is available on all the best podcast platforms. And of course, Kyle Connor joins us from the majestic, practically palatial halls of Outerspec Studios, where he produces high voltage videos for a number of YouTube channels with a drink from Starbucks acai <laughs> something in his hand. There we go. Hey there, everybody. Good to see you all. Hey, morning. Hey, guys. No, afternoon. It looks like you have a nice, like, tropical kind of background there, uh, Kyle. Yeah, I'm in uh, sunny Florida, as are you. Oh, right? Okay. Wow. Uh, that's, that's a much nicer view, of, even though it's just some greenery in the background. Than, I know. Nothing I wrong with, nothing wrong with your, uh, you know, your desk, Dom, but you know, a bit of greenery would be nice occasionally. It's true. I have an azalea bush so I'm looking at right now, and it's got some blossoms just starting on it. Uh, so let's kick the show off, if we can, with the EV News Daily Weekly <clears throat> Reporting Roundup. Okay, right, let's do this. I have my notes. A camouflage Tesla Model 3, ludicrous. We think it's going to be called that now. Another one seen in the US being towed, underlining, we think is the growing anticipation for a May release of this, and it's going to have better specs than the outgoing performance. Dan O'Dowd, a vocal critic of Tesla's technology, well, FSD, really, turns out this kind of blew Tesla fans' minds. He's a really big Tesla fan, even though he runs TV ads against full self-driving. He owns eight of them, and he was the person who bought those three, you know the three in the shipping container in China that had sat there for 10 years? He's He didn't want them to go anywhere else, and so they're being added to his Tesla collection. I know, it kind of blew my mind as well. This guy had Super Bowl adverts against Tesla, but he loves them. Uh, Hyundai is going to rename its upcoming three-row crossover from Arnic 7 to Arnic 9, which kind of fits in with its kind of Kia cousin as well. California marks a significant achievement with 25% new car sales in the state being zero emissions vehicles last year, surpassing its own ZEV sales and targets for fast chargers as well. 1.5 million EVs have now been sold in the state of California and 10,000 fast chargers installed ahead of their own schedule. Lucid's CEO Peter Rawlinson talking this week about he thinks the most important conversation to have in electric vehicles is efficiency and the goal being 10 kilometers per kilowatt hour. That's 6.2 miles per kilowatt hour, saying that Lucid's will be at five by the end of the year, five miles per kilowatt hour. Um, but that the, the goal should be 6.2 or 10 Ks because then a 30 kilowatt hour battery would do most people's needs. Nissan announcing the discontinuation of the Nissan Connect EV app for the Leaf and ENV 200 models in the UK. They're pre-2016 ones uh, with the shutdown of our 2G network. 3,000 drivers or so affected, kind of underlying the not disposability of electric vehicles, but the reliance on connected services and technology. Hyundai unveiling an updated Arnic 5 this week, a new N-Line sport variant and improvements to the range and design inside. They unified the map and nav buttons, which in my Kona, I could never work out. What was the difference? It's now one button. And it's from a 77 to an 84 kilowatt hour battery. Porsche is unveiling a track focus take on variant this month. Next week, in fact, I think, um, following their Nürburgring lap time of 7 minutes, 7 seconds. 
And the teaser image had a big old splitter on the front and a massive rear wing. So can't wait to see what they unveil. Uh, Volkswagen Group talking this week about their timeline for the J3400 to CCS1 adapter. Not only to access Tesla superchargers, but also any third-party chargers that crop up with J3400 on, they say, 2025 at the latest. Now, Ford reported 11% increase in their US car sales last month in February, propelled by, check my notes here, this, this can't be right, electric vehicles? No, we've been told that no one's buying EVs anymore. That's what did it for them. A Porsche dealership in Florida acquired an early Tesla Cybertruck for $244,000 from Mannheim Auctions and immediately relisted it for $290,000. That's a 46 grand markup for a day's work. The Tesla Gigafactory near Grünheide in Berlin had a big power outage as a terrorist organization targeted the high power lines that crisscrossed the country, uh, taking the Volcano Group taking responsibility for disrupting not only that, but up to 60,000 residents in even up to the Berlin area as well could close the plant for uh, about a week or so up to March 17th. Audi updated the Q4 e-tron lineup to stay competitive. The 40 and 50 versions go. There's a 45 and a 55 version now. 77 kilowatt hour usable battery remains, but uh, some efficiencies. Our friend Chris Reefer, uh, Chris with a K-R-I-S, his YouTube channel is brilliant, had a great video yesterday on the 45 version. Charged really well, by the way, um, and uh, go check that out. Uh, Mini launched the first electric version of their Countryman here in the UK, marking the beginning of their new lineup. Still on the sort of same platform as the iX1, iX2, so it's not their latest greatest, but it's still very good. The 4D Transit was upgraded this week with a battery pack from 68, to 89 kilowatt hours making a big difference and byd introduced their new seagull honor edition i know we can't get that vehicle where uh, outside of china but bear with me it has a starting price of equivalent nine thousand seven hundred dollars now uh, you know it's difficult to do the conversion thing but this is a car with you know, parking sensors and rear camera and advanced ADAS systems and yes yeah, a small city car but it'll seat five people very comfortably uh, it's got cameras and radar and all the things that you would just want on a on a decent car for less than 10 grand and now you know why lawmakers and ceos of car companies have all got squeaky bums over the chinese cars i've been telling you for five years they're coming and they will do and that is your update uh everyone uh, on this podcast dom and carl have been saying go back to do youtube videos it's just record yourself talking which is what i did this week so the youtube channel for ev news daily is revived I lit a fire underneath it, and, uh, and so it, it's back on. If, you, if you'd like to have a look at the video versions of what I do every day, uh, check out EV News Daily, and that is your update. All right. Thanks for that, Martin. Yeah, so I'll congratulate you, Martin, on getting the video version of EV News Daily back up and running on YouTube. So I would urge all of you to go out and check out his channel. Hit that, most importantly, hit that notifications bell, because he's putting up these videos every day, so... That, that's a great tool to uh, remind you that, to look at this beautiful, look at this man's beautiful face. I have a face for radio, Dom. I've told you before, but you've, got, you, you've all been nagging me to just don't just do the audio. So uh, yeah, no. I, uh, I, I, should, I should have listened three years ago. But anyway, it's back on. All right. So this was like a huge week in the electric vehicle world. Two very different companies have launched very different products, and we're excited about all of them. But uh, I guess let's start with Rivian. So yesterday at the Laguna Beach space in California, the EV only automaker introduced its next products that will be built on the on its new midsize platform. Uh, as expected, the presentation kicked off with the R2, which is an SUV that looks very much like the Rivian R1S, but it's 1.2 feet shorter, 5.4 inches lower, and it's got a the wheelbase is 5.5 uh, inches shorter as well. Then uh, CEO RJ Scaringe surprises by unveiling a whole other vehicle, the R3, which is an even smaller crossover, but imbued through and through with the Rivian design. Then after talking about this car for a while and going through its features, he pulled the old Steve Jobs line. <laughs> but there's one more thing, uh, one more thing. Um, what's that? Then he introduced the, what happened to Kyle just turned into Jordan there. For, I don't even know what happened. I'm like reading this. <laughs> It's Starbucks. It's still well, Kyle. Well, Jordan was at the Rivian it's, event, so I figured he should, ah. you know, talk about his experience. Oh, yeah, sure. That's, we got an upgrade. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's <laughs> <true>. <laughs> Oh, man. 
All right. So, uh, so after, right. after you introduced the, so you introduced the R2, the R3, and then he pulled the Steve Jobs line and introduced the R3X, which is basically the performance version of the R3 with bigger and wider wheel arches and wheels. Uh, so just a couple of points before we hear from the panel, the, the platform uses a structural battery filled with 4695 cells. So those would be uh, cells that are just a bit, they're like pretty big actually. Uh, they're just a bit longer than the ones that Tesla uses in the Cybertruck. The R2 and R3 will have two different battery size options. Well, R3 just gets the bigger pack. The R2 starts at $45,000 for the small battery in rear wheel drive. It will be available in a two and three motor configuration. Uh, the R3X also gets the three motor configuration. I'm not sure if the R the uh, R3 does. We'll have to ask Jordan in a sec. Uh, but the the uh, tri motor uh, vehicles will do zero to sixty in under three seconds. Seconds, I believe they said comfortably under three seconds. And I'm sure if that R3X, it's such a small vehicle, three motors, it's going to rip. Uh, the large battery versions of these, all these uh, different vehicles, it's claimed will have over 300 miles of range. Uh, yeah. So Jordan, does the R2 have come with in the three motor configuration? Do you know? Yes. R2 comes in single dual and tri motor configurations. Okay. Besides the R3X. You mean the R what? Cause, uh, the, cause the R3X oh. comes in, in the tri motor, right? And, and and a dual motor and a dual motor um, version as well. It, okay, that makes sense. It, yeah, RJ indicated all all these vehicles would all come with the same type of powertrain options. Okay, right on. So you were there in person. Um, what really st you know st stood out to you is you know being the like what was the big, the big moment of the presentation? Uh, well, RJ came out and everyone applauded like crazy. For a long time, an awkwardly long time. Uh, <laughs> I think he's a very popular CEO. You know, when Elon does something, he's very mm -hmm. popular with some people, and then some other mm -hmm. people really despise him. RJ just seems like he's just loved by everyone. So he, even he looked awkward with how much uh, how much applause there was. But right. uh, yeah, he he acted very much like Steve Jobs the whole presentation. No teleprompter. Impressive. Just talked. That was uh, good. That's good. Uh, he, he had everything kind of memorized. Uh, it was really well done. Um, he didn't have the black turtleneck, so not quite Steve Jobs to that extent. But yeah, the, I mean, R2, everyone was cheering. Every, everyone expected that. That's why we were there. And then he's like, oh, one more thing. We're like, oh, Apple event. And then R3 came out. And R2 pulled forward, which means R3 took the center stage, which meant the stage was a bit lopsided. And so I knew at that moment there must be something else. And so... Oh. One more thing was R3X, which everyone just lost their mind at. Even though that was the most concepty, you know, that's why Kyle left the room. He can't handle a concept car. Um, that was the one that was like, wow, everyone wants this. And also it's, I think it'll still come to production. I'm sure they'll change some things. You know, it had a very wild, different interior. R3 and R2 had the same looking interior for the most part. But he said they he, they, he gave the designers full hands off like do whatever you want with the interior of r3 so they did it looks great we're looking at it on the screen here man the r3x those wheels <laughs> it's it looks so great tom what, what do you think about this thing i mean so first we maybe should, i don't know should we address it as a concept is it a concept car i mean this is kind of, of is. in my mind I, <laughs> I feel like it's production intent mm. well, well concepts get production <laughs> intent you know they just make some changes you know I, it's certainly a concept, in my opinion, uh, that's okay. what I'm it at least. Uh, to their I'm credit, saying. Rivian has been pretty good with bringing concepts to life. Um, so I fully believe this is basically what it will look like, other than a tiny couple things here and there. Um, he even mentioned that the you know, he, or he pointed out that the the front fascia, which we all know and love, the hungry hungry hippo, as Liv calls it, um, is even slightly different. Like the headlight sizes are a bit shorter and wider on this, so. That's uh, that's slight variations from R1 fascia. You don't always know that until you like look at them side by side. Yeah, and what I meant by concept is it could remain very close to this, you know, the appearance inside and outside, but there absolutely will be changes. This isn't going to go into production for a long time. I mean, even I remember I was at the original R1T event 
uh, God, I forget where it was. I know it was in California. I forget what year it was. But there's definitely changes on that vehicle to from from that vehicle to the production vehicle. Even the the front, uh, the in, the layout of the front was different. But in general, it looks like you know if you weren't a geek going over the vehicle, and you would think it was the same thing. But um, yeah, I mean this is this is a, a ways out. But that the the R three is really what. Um, and I, I guess I'm not the only one that would feel this way, is what really made me, uh, say, excited about the brand. We knew the R2 was coming. We knew, kind of knew what it was going to be. No, no, no surprises there, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's what I would expect. Um, and is, is that, you know, was that going to be Rivian's Model 3 moment? You know, we know Rivian makes some great vehicles. I've owned an R1T. I now own an R1S. Um, sales are kind of flat right now. Rivian announced that they're not going to be making more vehicles in 2024 than they did in 2023. Uh, they're expensive vehicles. A lot of people can't afford them. Uh, it was the same way with Model S in the beginning with Tesla. And not until they um, made 3 and Y that w were they really a high volume automaker. And uh, this is what we were thinking that the, the R2 might be Rivian's Model 3 moment. But the more I'm looking at it now, you know, and it will be, but they are hitting the market with a one-two punch like Tesla did with three and Y. They're coming out with two and three, uh, you know, Rivian. And and that's the the three to me has the 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 potential to be Rivian's, you know, their coming out vehicle, the, the mass market vehicle. Because the, the uh two is gonna be it's gonna be quote unquote affordable, but not for a lot of, of folks. This should be even less expensive. I know we want to talk about the X because it's the sexy, spicy version of it, but the just the regular version is really that's what's going to pull Rivian into uh, you know the next decade that vehicle uh, and uh, looks good to me. I tell you my first impression. I know a lot of people threw out a lot of different vehicles, but I was looking like Dodge Omni, Plymouth Horizon, and Do Dodge came out with the uh, the this is in the mid '80s the GLH. So I pulled up a picture of it. That's the Shelby GLH. And that's totally what I saw. I mean, that's that's my wheelhouse, mid-80s, like when I got my driver's license and a friend of mine had one and uh, they were a blast to drive. So that 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 profile is really what what I first saw. I saw that and a little Ionic 5 mixed in. Like, um, But um, yeah, that was... And my friend had a, a, a early 80s Ford Fiesta. The, the, <laughs> that, the, the, the uh, hatch rake reminds me of that. Uh, also, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a great uh, one-two punch for Rivian. They needed this. The, uh, I love their vehicles. They have great vehicles, but they're they're too expensive. They're they're losing money. You know, it's it's. I know their finances are getting a little bit better, but they needed to get something to market. I'm just. I wish that they could get the R3 out next year, and that that's not going to happen. It's going to be two full years from now before we get R3, and that those are going to be. Tough years for Rivian, I think. You know, uh, uh, you know they're 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 struggling to get more volume out, and uh, that's going to get it. And then if, if they get there and they're in good financial shape two years from now, by the time that the uh, the two launches, then I think they're going to be okay. And um, you know, they, these two vehicles are are exciting vehicles. Yeah, a yes. lot of people in the comments mentioned Lada Neva as another. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Another right. Yeah, vehicle. that's right. Mm -hmm. it, it just immediately to me, um, it felt like Ionic 5 and R1S had a baby, and that's the Rivian R3. Um, but yeah, the, the, the timing is interesting. The R2 being scheduled for deliveries in early 2026, that is two years from now. And so a lot can change with the market. Uh, right. I am glad that RJ and Rivian didn't even mention really tax incentives. You know, a lot of companies mm -hmm. will be like, this will be the price after tax incentives, or they'll, they'll mention the price and they'll immediately be like, oh, by the way, with tax incentives, it goes, it cuts under that. Rivian right. knows those can change. Things can change. We're going into an election year. There's a lot of chaos happening out there. So I'm glad they focused on the actual purchase price. Right. Now we'll see if they actually hold to that. Um, I'm, I'm worried it could be a situation like with R1 where it came out and then immediately or nearly immediately the price went up a bit. Um, so I guess they could technically honor the price and then shift things but i don't know a lot can change with the market in two years right and did Rivian's, it say about sorry so i just wanted one quick note tom rivian one is doing along the lines of what tesla um does they're giving their existing customers 
uh, preference in line for the vehicle. I got an email this morning that said, hey, you want an R2 as a Rivian owner? Oh. We'll put you up in the front of the line. So okay. that was something that I hadn't seen reported anywhere, but so uh, they're are, doing that. Are, are you at the front of the line? I haven't made a reservation. Okay. I was tempted. I was thinking, oh, actually, you know, maybe I should do that just for the the ride. But then I saw, uh, I have to stop reserving vehicles. I don't even know how many I have hundred dollar deposits on at this point, at least five. You okay. know? So at some point I have to say, okay, I'm not going to be buying all these. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's chill out. But the three, if, if that might be a vehicle that I would have put a deposit on, if they, right. if they, if they said, you know, we're taking a deposit now, I love hot hatches and this might finally be the electric hot hatch that I can use as my daily driver. The tri-motor R3, you know, that that is the R3X, I guess it is. That could be my daily driver. I could see myself, you know, selling the lightning for 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 uh, the R3X as, as a daily driver. Yeah, I mean, even the R3 non-X will still get tri-motor option. And the, it's going to be such a fun, spicy, hot hatch. I think that's what we've needed. You know, I wish we had the ID3 here, you know, driving ID3 in Europe. I was like, this is what, this is my kind of EV. I'm People know I'm such a small car guy. So I was, it is funny how the, I think so much was riding on the R2. And I think so much is riding. I mean, it's going to be supposedly world market car, like right-hand drive options, like a lot of things coming and built in normal Illinois. That's super cool. But uh, it's funny how R3 completely stole the show, even though it's yeah. the one we technically know the least about. Right. And that's kind of like this. It's almost, hmm, it's like the fly in the ointment. Now it's kind of more in your face. So the R3 is, you know, really captured a lot of people's imaginations. But it's so far out there. We can't even think of it as a product yet, I don't think, you know, because I don't have any confidence that it's going to happen even. Because so they're putting, they have this whole, you know, factory in Georgia that we're planning and building and up, you know, building the R2 and other future vehicles there, like, a, you know, a huge amount of output. They've been working on that site, making some improvements to it. And now it's on hold. They've stopped. So they're going to shift production of the R2. It's going to be done in Illinois at the normal plant. So they're going to have to redo that plant somewhat. And, uh, and that, and they're not going to, you know, they're going to, they want to keep doing the, the Georgia plant, but you know, they just can't do it right now. So it, I just feel like I'm, it's, I'm, I'm touring, you know, I'd, I'd love to see the R3 and stuff, but I'm not sure if they should even be talking about it. Cause it really stole, stole a lot of the R2's thunder. So I'm, I'm like inside, I'm like, like, I love the R3. Like I was, I got so emotional when he brought out like the second, like the R2 <laughs> or the R3. It's like a whole other vehicle. I mean, that's a me. That's really great that they've got that much to get. They've got it together that much, you know, and brought it into the three. I was like, just it really kind of really hit me, you know. Um, mm. But now, but the reality of it, yeah, it's tough because, yeah, they can build the R two, and but then the R three is going to be pushed out. It's going to be at the end of 26 at the earliest and i'm thinking maybe the end of 27 before they can get that because that plant they weren't planning on building it that quickly either and it's like their production the build plan seemed kind of well not slow by you know standards of yesteryear but by today's standards factories are going up fast you know like a year and a half yeah, That's... and then it's it is technically possible that they could under promise and over deliver they could try to push for the end of 2025 deliveries. And their official response was R3 will come shortly after. Obviously right. we don't know what shortly means, but mm -hmm. it could be right on the heels because they know that's also an important vehicle. Um, I think R3 was a little bit bigger than EX30. So I think, you know, a lot of us have been excited about EX30 and now mm -hmm. my excitement has shifted a bit towards R3, especially with my, how I feel like I compare the interiors of Rivian and Volvo feeling kind of similar. Um, and Rivian's just did, doing so many things right with this this unveiling. I mean, they they focused a lot on the fun function of components. Like people were, loved the flashlight in the door. They kept that. Um, although I was hoping they would use like one of the new bigger battery cells for like a Ooh. different kind of flashlight, like a big yeah. beefy, like this will charge your phone 20 times or something like that. Um, but they have the flashlight in the door. And then in the other door, they had a hand warmer slash phone charger that was the same size as the flashlight. So that's cool. And they said future accessories are coming to also fit that little crevice. Um, and also with accessories, they talked about the tent. They really lean into 
biking, like bicyclists finally have uh, a vehicle and maybe they don't have to pick vehicle or bicyclist. You know, there's all those memes about each one. Um, and then the the camp kitchen is something they brought up um, kind of quietly to the press afterwards saying, uh, we are doing a camp kitchen. Not, well, they didn't call it camp don't, kitchen. But kitchen. Don't say camp kitchen. You're going to trigger Tom here. I don't want to hear about that. Um, <laughs> well, it's a big reason why I sold the R1T. <laughs> because I wanted it with the camp kitchen. And I, nope. you know, when I was, when I was sizing it up against my lightning, when I own both of them, you know, I love the lightning. We all know that. But if, if the Rivian had the camp kitchen, that would have made it very difficult for me to sell that. Cause I would be using that. I do, I go a lot of events with my friends and parks and everything. And uh, like, I'm so pissed that they did, never delivered on that. They've no, pivoted to a different kind of kitchen. Whenever it does come out, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I would love it's to It's called have, the no kitchen. I would love to have one of your pieces. That's what it's called. <laughs> and, well, they said they're, they're making it, and then they were like, oh, by the way, it'll be for R1, R2, R3, and non-Rivian. So whatever they're doing, they're making it very variable. Uh, they got across. one guy in the corner of the warehouse working on it. It's been <laughs> three years now, and it's not ready. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> don't don't tease us if you're not going to do that you know it's like the you know that um uh what was it called when the, the truck spun in the in the off-road the uh what tank turn? was that tank tank turn. Turn. no no the where the wheels it spun yes. completely in a certain was turn. It? yeah yeah tank turns oh tank turn yeah i thought you said k turn yeah mm. uh, yeah <laughs> they never, you know, that. <laughs> we never got that either so like like i'm um you know while i love rivian uh, i love them i have on two of their vehicles I'm not giving them passes on this stuff. Don't show us no. something and then say you can't have it. Don't get, show me a camp kitchen and then say no soup for you. No, you know, like, Tom's you know, don't deliver kitchen. it if you're not going to, if coming. you're not. Yeah, I know. Well, Jordan triggered me by saying, oh, yeah, and they're going to give me a camp <laughs> kitchen. Yeah. yeah. I knew that was going to be a hot button. <laughs> Where's the camp kitchen? I'm still yeah. waiting on my camp kitchen. It's brilliant. So I, I kind of. Go ahead, oh, yeah. Martin. I think the R2 is incredibly important, is all I would say, is that I think the R3 wasn't a mistake. I think it was a good thing to do because it it, it lit a fire underneath, uh, you know, Rivian, and they could even do with a bit more investment, actually, although they got some money in the bank and they'll get through. But uh, I, 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 would, I would like to focus on the R2 because that seems the more real-life vehicle here. It's a little bit shorter than the Model Y. It's a, you know, which is the number one selling passenger car in the world. It's the same as a, as a Mustang Mach E. Forty five grand is a real sweet spot for family buyers who are using finance to get a vehicle. I don't want to be, uh, you know, a party pooper and you know, sort of a downer. But I think Rivian lose between forty and fifty thousand dollars every vehicle they sell, and you can't survive on a vehicle that starts at seventy thousand uh, dollars. As as much as the flagships are incredible, and so. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they did the threes, but again, same as you, Dom. I'm partly a little bit torn because no one's talking about the art. Well, they are. Fewer people are impressed with the two because they're like, yeah, yeah, we knew this was here. We The one more thing. And we began this podcast focusing on the three and the three X. The R2 is where it is, where it's at. And I think beginning 2026 is ambitious for a startup. They're going to, they're going to close normal later this year to retool it, to make, production more efficient and more cost effective as you say georgia is on the back burner now but i i don't think you can underestimate the importance of the r2 in rivian making it because without another vehicle rivian don't make it they at some point they run out of money right because it's costing them to make cars yeah. and so the r2 is where rivian survives or dies and it sort of felt like this is the vehicle which will save the company or not and get you through to the three. And yet no one really gave it that level of importance because then the shiny thing arrived. So I really want Rivian to make it. I want all the car companies to make it, to be honest with you. Um, but I really want Rivian to make it. I don't think it's a dead cert that any of any car company will be in the same shape it's in now in 10 years time, let alone in five years time. So it, it's all about the two. It's getting the two out in really big numbers as well and and splitting that that because they've got free capacity at, at normal now uh right. they're, they're not at they're not at their limit so paul's georgia save 2.5 billion in capital expenditure and get the two out as quick as possible and i think that that is the vehicle that saves 
that puts Rivian in the black. Uh, it, I, you can't underestimate how important this is. Yeah, I wonder how many reservations were cannibalized by the three being shown. Uh, at least they opened reservations right when the uh, announcement started. So people right. got their R2 in anyways. Um, and fortunately, the three doesn't have the flat folding front seats. So the R2 has that. Oh, the three doesn't have the folding flat seats? At least That's they didn't talk about it. They didn't show it. And I don't know how okay. they could if it's that crammed in there. Like it's it's not crammed, but like compared to the R2, the R2 is a very nice, spacious two row. They kind of called out Model Y subtly and they were like, oh, yeah, we're not going to mess with squeezing in a useless third row. Um, so right. <laughs> I think right. it makes sense too. Like people, if they want the three row, they're looking at the S, the R1. I, I, I think they knew that. Um, I think they knew the importance of inviting out of spec there as well, because although uh, MKBHD is the only one that I saw that got a one-on-one -on -one tour of the vehicles, he did get to go inside. You know how on a Rivian, when you log into the vehicle, it shows your name at the at the top. Did you clock the name that they'd used on the screen? No, it was Jordan. No, oh, so, oh, I saw that. I did see that. Yeah, they actually. they knew he yeah. was coming. They knew he was there, and it, it was all about. I, I knew that that was the reason they chose it. <laughs> That's the least important thing I'll say all day, but it, but it's tickled me ever since I saw it. <laughs> I specifically asked about having alone time with the vehicle because Rivian invited me to go, and mm. I said, "Well, will I have even just ten minutes alone, you know, with the vehicle?" And they said, "No, we won't be able to do that." So that's why I didn't go. Marquez's video was like 14 can, minutes. Yeah, his video know, was like well, 14 minutes, 59 seconds. And it I think already he has 800,000 like views in 15 minutes. Wow. In 15 hours, yeah. So but, that's why he gets the, uh, Marquise gets the, uh, <laughs> the alone time with the vehicle. Yeah, your best so, mate. Um, but uh, but yeah. I get the feeling. He, he was the, and he's got 20 million subscribers, I think, on, on his, his main channel. And um, it was... It was a scrum, but they cleared the room out as, as well. And, you know, as, as if you've seen the out of spec video, as Jordan knows, they cleared the room out. You know, you guys and Mackie vlog got a little bit of quiet time with the vehicles, and that was nice. And there was loads of people uh, uh, there um, that, uh, that I recognized kind of in the background flying around. And Jordan, you managed to grab a few of them on camera and stuff. It was um, it was great. It was like it looked hectic, but really, really kind of intense and that buzzy. Yeah, I got Zach's thoughts from Jerry everything, and we had the same thoughts. He was hoping the one more thing would be like a Bronco Jeep like competitor like removable roof panels and things like that but you know engineering that's a nightmare so I'm, I'm i don't i don't see why they didn't wait yeah i, I think they had, i think they got the product right i don't know so Kyle, what, did you, what did you think of the r2 to be honest uh yeah. that has been jordan's project so i have not right. paid it much attention everyone else is talking about it i'm finding out about it right now well i figured <laughs> I, would, I would focus my energy on something different i was actually right in the middle of an appointment when this was happening. So I wasn't able to watch the live stream. I saw all the buzz. Everyone was texting me. This is crazy. Can you believe the R3? I'm like, what are you talking about? And so <laughs> really, uh, you know, it was, it was interesting to say the least. And I think they uh, nailed the styling R3. I told Jordan, we're not even talking about it. It doesn't exist. I don't right, even know why right. we bring it up. R2 is something somewhat tangible, but it's still not till early 26, it's which still is a, you know, a long way away. And and mm -hmm. we've spent 33 minutes in the beginning of our podcast talking about a car that doesn't come out for two years. That's why so he left the room. That's why I left. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, you know, looks great. Specs seem good. They keep saying 300 miles of range. Okay. In which cycle? In what, you know, like right. give us some details. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, it's very basic, very high level talking points. And that's what they need for mass market. It just, it's, it's not what gets me excited. These types of presentations. Um, I, I reserved an R2. Uh, I actually, uh, a friend of mine, I guess, hacked the site and found the link like four minutes before it went <laughs> live. So I had okay. a chance to fill out my credit card info and everything just at, I think 12 56 PM, uh, is when it, when I got my reservation in instead of 1 PM Eastern when it launched. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I, I don't know what the heck we'll do with that i don't you know it's 100 bucks i'm not planning yeah. on buying one, but it gives us the option well and i've only seen it on screen and, and things so you know what's just looking at it on screen does does it have any appeal to you at all it's like a shrunken r1s which you're familiar with oh appeal yeah but i don't buy cars based on design i think our latest acquisition uh you know proves that but uh, <laughs> i don't like it but <laughs> <laughs> but but i think you know this is a great looking vehicle but it all just comes down to usability is an right. r1s used going to be cheaper than this new and if the answer is yes then why wouldn't you just buy an r1s uh i like i like the size of this better personally it was just, yeah, just r1s more... is already too small r1s is not big 
it's pretty big. I don't know. Oh, In person, they look big. I, yeah, I, I don't know. R1SS is a weird thing yeah. to me. It looks it looks bigger to me in person than the R1T for some yeah, reason. No, well, it's definitely not that. But it's, but it's but smaller. It's, sh it's, it's shorter. It's 14 but, inches shorter yeah. or something crazy. It's but, you know, shorter. I, we li we're the last town before Wyoming. Vehicle size doesn't play into any role for me. I got all the room in the world. True, so true. Yeah, we, we look up in our R1T to the F350. So. Yeah, I go, <laughs> dang, wouldn't it be nice to have a dually F350 <laughs> diesel? Uh, but honestly, they nailed it. I heard, I, you know, I, I got glimpses of the presentation. I'm going to watch the whole thing through today. They really know how to do branding. They know how to do storytelling. That is what Rivian, you know, it, it felt like Apple 10 years ago. Um, the excitement was there. They really know how to communicate the specs that resonate with people, whether or not they're rooted in the nerd technical nth degree that I care about. We can get that information from them when the time comes. Yeah. But uh, the, one thing that's proved to me is they have nailed the communication portion of mm -hmm. all of this. And uh, no no one can top them right now, not even Tesla, in terms of storytelling. Yeah, to, 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 your, to your point, I'm never going to go camping in this vehicle because uh i'm i'm past the stage of sleeping in my car been there done it now, <laughs> now I, like, I like a hotel now but but you know what i mean but it appeals to me to to be able to fold the front seats down and have a completely flat car and you know the whole talk of hey you know you can put your bike in uh, in the back of the two or the three and just open up just the glass range rover yeah. style and um have the wheel hanging out if you need to or put your surfboard in the back the like, I, do that. Mm -hmm. I, I live by the beach. I don't go surfing, but I, I subscribe to the idea of going surfing. And um, and that's, that's a really great point. They they nailed the branding. They always kept coming back to the lifestyle elements, even when I watched the, 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 the Marquez video as well. And he was saying, so two battery... He was really like nailing uh, RJ on the details. He was like, so two battery pack sizes. So there is a smaller one that doesn't do 300 miles. And he was like, yeah, there will be a small one, and it, and and that'll do less. But 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 this car's going to be great for surfing. And they always kept coming back to the lifestyle, and that's where it was so good. They also um, unveiled a new UI inside uh, or a new look mm -hmm. to it, uh, mm -hmm. which was I, I'm, I'm not I'm not an artsy guy, but it sort of looks kind of Volvo-y, Scandi pastel colors, and that was their intro holding page before the live stream as well, which seems to be their new branding. Yes, yeah, Kyle says uh, they've completely got the di their bit of the market really nailed even the presentation i thought was amazing small room loads of people in the round almost in the round just like a screen at one end but otherwise people very close to the front of the stage it wasn't like a tesla event where there's crash barriers and safety and you can't get near elon musk which is fair enough he's the richest person in the world and you know some people are crazies but um i thought it's a very interesting vibe to it which filters through their brand and also, my final point, R3 surprised everyone. What does that tell you about the company? Nobody leaked the R3. Like we yeah. all know pe we all know people in the and, and it, you know, if you know differently, you can tell me on our private WhatsApp group, but we all know people in the company, in the industry. There's always whispers and rumors. I didn't hear a thing about the R3. And I think that says a lot about the people who work at Rivian and the type of people who are buying into their the mission that they're on. And I was really impressed with that as well. Yeah. But uh, we should move on. There's not whole, some lot of whole. The, the most technical detail we have, like on charging, is you know it's gonna have native NACs, so you, and it'll charge from ten to eighty percent in less than thirty minutes, which is not mind blowing. It could be it could be better. I'm not really sure what's going on with their battery and charging strategy, but I think they should spend the next year and a half before launch, kind of looking at that or something, because that's not really. I, I don't think it's good enough. I think right now they want to be a going concern. You know, if we want to see the art, they really need to have an edge on the competition. Uh, but I won't uh, go on too long about that. Before we move on, the only last thing I want to add to this is the, the R3 looks fantastic. We haven't seen the Tesla Model 2, which is going to be a direct competitor to that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be interesting. Does the, does the Model 2... When does the Model 2 come out? Does it come out? And does does it have a, a year and a half of sales before the R3 comes out? And it's already established itself as like, you know, a, a, the, 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 the benchmark in that category. So that it's going to be interesting. Um, but it's good that these two brands are bringing out, you know, smaller, more affordable, long range electric vehicles. It's good for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it should be uh, the R2, uh, the R2. Uh, Model 2, Model 2, it's supposed to have like Cybertruck vibes from what I understand, but we'll, well, I guess we'll see. So 
Earlier this week, though, Dodge unveiled the production versions of its new charger, which is built on the large STLA platform. The products and presentation style couldn't have been more different from Rivian's. So Dodge CEO Tim uh, Kaniskas talked about performance and noise and nothing about efficiency. Two of the models, the Dodge Charger Daytona Scat Pack and Dodge Charger Daytona RT are all electric, but there are also there will also be two combustion versions, Dodge Charger six pack HO and Dodge Charger six pack SO. So those will both be powered by, uh, I guess, three liter twin turbo uh, I six engine hurricane engines. So straight sixes, I guess. Uh, interestingly, the electrics will come in either two or four door configurations. Well, the most powerful gas version comes in two door and the less powerful one gets four doors. Also interesting to note that the most powerful charger, the 800 volt Banshee was not part of this announcement. That will get its own announcement next year, uh, or its own launch, I guess. Meanwhile, the Scat Pack and RT chargers will have 400 volt systems. And that's what we just saw. So the batteries in these things are 100.5 kilowatt hours, they say, and use nickel cobalt aluminum cells. Uh, it has a maximum power output of 550 kilowatts, which would be like 730 horsepower. They don't unleash the whole thing though, uh, not yet at least. So the, R the Charger RT will have 496 horsepower and the Scat Pack 670 horsepower. So they also say that the RT will get that's a less powerful one, 300 or more than 317 miles of range. And the more powerful Scat Pick gets 260 miles of range. So it's got a ton of modes and features, mostly centered on performance. Besides like the, your normal auto, eco, sport, wet, snow conditions, track, track model Scat Pack gets a drag mode. And the, the Dodge Charger Daytona Scat Pack also gets donut mode, drift mode, line lock, which they use for drag racing to kind of hold the brakes on the front front wheel so they can spin the back up and warm up the tires on, on a drag strip. Gets launch control and race prep. So the other big difference with the Rivian offerings has to do with the timing. These cars are coming soon. The two-door versions of the electrics go into production around the middle of this year, while the four-door and gas versions start production in early 2025. So Kyle, if you're there, we, we know you love speed and performance. So do these chargers have any appeal to you or to Tom, if Kyle's not here, Kyle did, did leave me in charge dangerously. Okay. Um, I will say I, <laughs> I went, I went to the last Dodge event. So Dodge has been, been you know, obviously quiet about EVs for a while. And the last event they invited us to was very weird. I felt extremely out of place. And it's actually where I've made my greatest faux pas of all time. Um, Leah, it was, it was a Dodge race drag racing NHTSA event. Uh, and Leah Pruitt taught me how to drag race in a challenger. You know, they had Hellcat everything. So I was, I learned to drag race in a manual Hellcat, which was super cool. Um, you know, I didn't know who she was. I didn't know that she was married to Tony Stewart. And so I asked her what her <laughs> husband liked and she's like, you probably heard of him, Tony Stewart. And I was like, oh dang, everyone's supposed to know that. So yeah, big, big miss on my part. Anyways, um, we are super curious to try these out. Um, and we've actually been reaching out to Dodge because for some reason we haven't been on their radar for events lately, which granted they haven't been um, in really electrifying events of late. So I guess <laughs> when this comes out, uh, we'd be interested. I mean, you know, Kyle likes kind of the American muscle and weirdly enough, his Polestar one feels a little bit like what a muscle car could be. Like it has that kind of size and shape somewhat of a challenger. Now this being four door, uh, at least having a four door variant, I think it's really intriguing, like a hot American muscle sedan. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of replaces the original, the last charger was the four door and then they had a challenger but that was a two door. So I'm from, I was a kid in the seventies and like back then everything, the same model, you know, came in either two or four doors and I haven't seen that in forever. So it's kind of really neat to see this now. Like, yeah, I don't know how long it's been since anyone's done that, but I'm, I'm really, I kind of lean two door most personally. I don't, I don't understand why people would take a four door option Functionality. A, with a two door. I, I, mean, I know that I mean, it looks, the two doors always look a ton better, Dom, but if you got kids and you're going to be using it, it's, it's a hassle with two doors. 
I mean, that's the right. reason why you get the four doors. Yeah. But I, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I actually yeah. want just to hear about what you thought about this thing. Well, I love the styling. I think it looks really awesome, particularly the two door version, obviously. Um, I think they really nailed it on the styling. The, the uh, um, artificial noise, I think, is a hokey gimmick. You know, people say there, Dodge customers want to hear it. Okay, um, I assume you could turn it off. I haven't really read that, but I assume you can you can you can turn yes. it off. Yes. Um, this thing is heavy. Yeah. It weighs. Put it this way, it weighs more than a thousand pounds more than a, a tri motor Model S Plaid. That's crazy. Okay, more than a thousand pounds more. It's closer in weight to my Lightning than a Tesla Model S how how that happened you know and uh, it has the same the base duty. no but it's got the same size battery pack as a model s but they're, right? they're using nca batteries which are really power dense but they're not super energy dense so understandable I, I, is what i'm thinking so i think their gravimetric uh energy is like the density is like really low maybe i'm sure that talking, added a couple hundred pounds maybe that, they've been but, talking to vinfast because the vinfast is like 400 pounds heavier than a model x with two fewer seats so yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's difficult shaving weight, you know, on vehicles. There's tons of decisions to be made. I remember when BMW was making the i3, they had like a, a target goal and the engineers and the designers. And I, and I went and I heard them telling me the story over in Munich. They fought, they literally almost came to fists over grams that they were shaving grams yeah. like you know the designer wanted the body panel to curve like this and the 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 uh engineers were saying no it's going to add you know 20 grams of weight or something so like the, the the art of of getting what you want but keeping the weight down is something that they go back and forth i get i guess in dodge the the designers won out on everything and the the engineers trying to keep the weight down so it would go faster didn't win many of the arguments i guess because they they um you know, God, it's almost three tons <laughs> and it's not an SUV, you know, it's and nuts. It's, it's on the large STLA. I, I, maybe it's like just a lot bigger than we really think it is. Maybe it's even bigger than the, than a Model S or something. I don't know, because it's the, the platform is meant to be electric kind of, it has, you know, combustion options, ice options, but it's really meant to be for, you know, electric vehicles. Uh, so, I'm, so I don't think there's that a lot of extra weight. There shouldn't be a lot of extra weight in the platform part of it. But so it's, you know, I but feel that like it's going to be batteries. You know, sorry. Even even in the best trim, they're talking three point three, which is really fast. But you know, you you would think that they would put out something that would start with a two in the zero to sixties. You know, if that's you know with this much power, it is it right. is their their high performance vehicle, and you know they can get there. It's just they needed to knock five hundred pounds off of this to. To, to get to, to like 2.9, you know, zero to 60. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, what else? Anything I love else? how it looks. I love how it looks. I think it looks really sexy. Yeah. Martin, do you have any thoughts on the, on the Dodge Charger? I think it, uh, I think the Model S Plaid is American muscle because it's brutal um, and will tear your face so off. Brutal. So, um, you know, we have those cars. You have that car already. Um, but... This will be interesting in because yeah, the launch as you say, Dom, was they were really trying to appeal to combustion car lovers and trying to persuade them to drive electric. And I think we're you know the sit the situation now you know million cars sold last year in the US, twenty four million EVs on the road in China right now. All all the stats say that EVs are, are here to stay, and I think you get to the point where explain to people the pros and cons let them pick you know in, in 20 years time you'll still be able to buy combustion stuff let's not force people into cars this will be interesting because i think they should i think they should go out and talk about the benefits of this car but equally if you want a gas guzzler and all the noise and the drama and all that kind of stuff go for it and that's that's the conversation that ferrari and maserati and all those brands are going to have with you know, they're, they're most hardcore fans. It felt like they hadn't quite nailed it yet because they seemed just a, almost a, not apologetic. They just didn't quite have the words right. They'll get there with it. Um, or just put it out there and say, here's a thing. Go and test drive it. And if you don't like it, go buy the combustion stuff. We don't care. Like, have all the options available. Right. 
Uh, Kyle, so we didn't get your impressions on, on the Dodge Charger Daytona. What, what do you think about this thing? What's the 0 to 60? 3.3. How much power does it have in kilowatts? In kilowatts, in kilowatts. Uh, the battery pack is capable of 550 kilowatts, but they don't unleash that whole thing. What? 700, the, the battery pack? They, they it's tell only them, capable of 550 kilowatts? 739 horsepower i believe that comes out to but but the the fastest one that they're talking about now is is less powerful than that roll up it's got 496 horsepower in the rt and then the scat pack is 670 horsepower for a 50 was it 5300 pound car or 5800 well, the, the weight 58. The, they're always been heavy but yeah um, and and that's fine but like uh you know this is supposed to be representing american muscle and a plaid is doing a, a thousand twenty horsepower, so right. I didn't even pay much attention to it because I was just like, they missed they missed the mark. Like they need a halo product. I don't understand why they're launching with electric first and then combustion. This is the core audience that loves combustion cars. They got to stay in business. Keep providing whatever powertrain your existing customers want, and um, it's just not that. I mean, they they have to have an over thousand horsepower version in the works coming soon. Um, right, the, the Banshee is the 800 volt one. The, the well, there we they go. Have, That's now it we're launches talking. next. It launches next year, though. Oh, great! Well, then, then that's but, okay with me. So, yeah. Okay, but still, I mean, I don't know. I saw, I saw a, a thing yesterday. It said the the uh, horsepower figure for that was around 800 and something horsepower, which seems like not enough. And it's almost 6,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It yeah. weighs so, more, anyway. more than a thousand pounds, more than a Model S Plaid, Kyle. Yeah, you know, I am. Probably less than zero interest in that car, personally. Yeah, I'd like to see you take it around the track. I think it'd be hilarious. Yeah, well, anything around the track can be hilarious. I mean, the, yeah, sure. But uh, we'll have to drive it, play around with it. Uh, yeah. yeah, They've never been track beasts. They They've have been straight line beasts. Yeah, they, they right. suck on track. Sure. They're in a straight line. And they have so much wheel gap. Mm -hmm. Like, let's slam <laughs> that thing. What's going on here? I don't know. Maybe maybe this oh, is just yeah. supposed to be the mundane pedestrian one, but there's nothing about that car that appeals to me personally. As a reviewer, I can get in that car and, and make a video showcasing it. Sure, no problem. I'll find mm -hmm. things that I like, things that I dislike, things that are objectively good and objectively bad. I will have no problem doing that and reviewing it. But if you're asking my personal interest in that car, yeah, it is yeah. negative one. Negative one. This is six. EV rental spec. Yeah, this is like if, if it's at the Hertz rental lot, maybe I'll try it for a day. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I want so I wonder if it'll. Well, I guess we will find out. You know, if it'll really um, speak to the the core Dodge audience because they they were really oh. they were really swinging for the fences with that presentation. There's a whole video you can get with uh, uh, Tim Kaniskas, uh You know, he meets the Dodge brothers back in time, and he brings them to the future. It's a whole movie, practically. Uh, a little yeah, bit. Congratulations to them for waking up to electric about time. Yeah, uh, make it's it just competitive bizarre. Car. Yeah, just the just the, uh, the you know the whole thing is really focused on that core Dodge you know audience, the the performance uh, muscle car kind of thing. But it's not performance. It's not fast. Right. I mean, well, we know that, but maybe the regular guy is driving around in his regular Charger now or, or Challenger. To him, that will it's faster than what he has now, or she has now. You know, it's it's quicker than that. So, yeah, but it's not it's not it's not a Tesla Model S by Plaid by any stretch, which I would take the Plaid I think over this. But I do like the looks. I like the I you know I do like the styling. I like that little front wing. Mm -hmm. On the on the, yeah. Yeah, I mean I. Yeah, I hear you. What else we got to talk about? <laughs> we got to talk. I don't know. Are we going to talk about your? Are you going to talk about your latest vehicle? No, I think we should talk about what Tom and I did this past yes. weekend. Yes, yes, we, we yes. should talk about that. Yeah, that's well, the uh, most important thing. Here. Well, we're going to do a whole podcast, I think, on that. But let's tease uh, everyone on yeah. what, what we did. Right. So last week, last week's show, if you remember, the big story was uh, Ford uh, uh, finally being able to supercharge at. Uh, Tesla supercharger stations. So, Tom has a Ford F one fifty Lightning and lives in New Jersey. Kyle, you somehow wrangled a Ford F Ford F one fifty Lightning, and also when you were also in New Jersey. So, uh, yeah, take it from there. Tell me what happened. Tom, go ahead. 
So Kyle calls me up and says, basically, so I'm coming to New Jersey for the, uh, uh, you know, the event Ford invited, uh, not a lot of people, a handful of people, um, to two locations, one in New Jersey, one in California to like make videos and just talk and give them the adapters and show that the supercharger networks opened for Ford vehicles now. So Kyle flew to New Jersey one. Uh, he was the first person to put out a video. He went there like six in the morning or something. I was still on a flight home from Sweden. I landed at two Ford met me there. I was the last one. We did a video. Everything came out nice. But then Kyle calls me up and he's like, Hey, so now that this, these things can charge on supercharger network, we have to test it out. And I'm like, yeah, a hundred percent. I plan on making some videos and stuff. He's like, no, we really have to test it out. How about racing me to Florida from your house? And I'm like, oh, shit, I'll be landing at Thursday. You want to leave Saturday morning. I've got all kinds of stuff to do. Meanwhile, I didn't even put out an article yet on Polestar and they like fly you there to do this stuff, to promote their, their products and everything. And I haven't done anything yet. It's been more than a week, but they know I warned them. I'm going to put out a really nice um, a piece in a video later this week. But uh, so that's what we did. Kyle, Kyle uh, came, came to my house with out of spec Dave uh, as his co-pilot. I grabbed Pete Bremy, who's in the comment stream right here now. And uh, the four of us left my house at 4.40 p.m. on Saturday. We were all going to get off to an earlier start, but we had some delays. So we ended up leaving at night, which benefited me because I think at least because I the way this race was set up, I could only use CCS1 stations driving all the way down from my house. Kyle could only use Tesla superchargers with the NAX adapter. So this was really, um, it was a test. It was a race between uh, I'm going to say Electrify America because I only stopped at Electrify America stations versus Tesla superchargers more so than it was a race Kyle against me because we set limits. We were only allowed to drive 10 over the speed limit. And, uh, you know, that's that. And so we it, it took us, uh, I'm just going to say less than 20 hours and i um, not going to say who won because we're going to do a dedicated uh, uh, show on that. But it was so close. Any one mistake either way would have would have would have made uh would have made the uh that there was the outcome different wow that's that's amazing i didn't make it down to meet you all so you ended in can we say where we ended yeah sure okay bucky's in daytona that was yeah. the the end goal but i was in atlanta i thought you guys were i didn't realize you guys were going to drive all night long like crazy people so, so i think oh the, i don't but i don't know how you'd actually do that whole you know stop and sleep you know <laughs> either well, and, and we were thinking about over, right? that right kyle okay. at one point you said maybe we won't just drive all the way down we'll both just stop and dock our times so, you know so we know how long it took but then we we're like ah let's let's let, let's let's just go for it right so i went i was in atlanta i, was, I wanted to drive the uh, fisker ocean and they were doing an event there i wanted to see if it was like as bad as marcus brownlee said he said it's like the his review is like this is the worst car i've ever driven or something like that which is like yikes um yeah well, i don't know if you want i won't talk about that right now but um yeah so it, race to it, florida yeah and so also I, kyle has a, a dedicated video on i have a dedicated video we were going to post them at the same time the but it's the mm -hmm. longest video i've ever made it's like the shortest video kyle's ever made but um uh, so we haven't decided when we're going to do that yet, either today or tomorrow. I don't know if Ta Kyle's done yet. Tomorrow. I finished my, yeah, I finished my, mine I, early this morning. I'm only, I think our videos, I shot four and a half hours worth of footage combined mm -hmm. and I have to get it down. I really want it to be like an hour, hour and a half. Mine's an hour right. and a half. Okay. So it's yeah, like I'll an hour 28, I think. Yeah. So, so uh, I got a, I got a lot to cut out and I've, so. I've already got halfway through, but we've just been busy. So yeah, I mean, I've, It'll go up probably tomorrow. Yeah, okay. and these are going to be fun videos. I can say a lot of fun things. You know, it, it was it was a lot of it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. Um, you know, we I was cooking inside the lightning as we were yeah, driving. You're going to see video is, of uh, that. So, so I was, calls me and he's like, "I'm on fire right now. My truck's <laughs> burning down." As <laughs> I understand, did you made Pete drive the whole way? Did you even drive? So I didn't make Pete drive the whole way. The whole plan was we were going to switch between charging stations. Mm -hmm. So Pete's like, "I'll get the first leg." Okay, I'll get the first leg. Uh -huh. We charge in Stafford, Virginia, and he's like, I'm good to go. I'll go in another leg. And I'm like, okay, because the way we did was after every charging stop, I made a short, like, two-minute video that summarized that stop. 
So the plan was, okay, I need to at least make this video and then we'll just pull over really quick. We'll swap, we'll get out and drive. It's going to cost us 30 seconds, but you know, we'll, we'll just go with that. And, and, it, and then we just never swapped. And then he's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then we get down to like South Carolina. And he's like, Tom, I'm getting tired. So I'm like, okay, um, at the, just let me record my quick, you know, two minute video to, we'll go over the charging. And as soon as it's safe on the highway, we'll pull over, you know, we'll, we'll pull around. So at that stop, he's out walking around, you know, while the car's charging and it's cool in the morning. And he's like, he's doing laps around the, the, the lot while I'm recording stuff. And we get back in the truck. He goes, I just needed that. I feel okay now. I'm, I'm going. And then, and then we get to the next stop. Now the final stop. And he's like, I made it this far. I'm going, I'm, I want to, I want to say that I drove to Florida the whole way. And of course I didn't care because I'm doing social media stuff. I'm recording video and I'm just sitting there. So I say Pete was my co-pilot, but I guess I was his co-pilot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like the funny thing I, we called Kyle, I, I have this pizza oven, it's electric. And I plugged it into the pro power on board. Cause we're like, you know, I want to eat in style on the way down. I see Kyle's got the back seat is just filled with potato chips and pretzels and everything. I'm like, I'm not going to for 20 hours, just eat that shit. You know what I mean? So I'm, I want to have some food. So, you know, we, I brought these uh, pizzas from a local pizzeria. I had a pizza oven. What I didn't think of though, was as this thing's warming up, the cabin is going to get hot as hell. Cause it's like 350 degrees, the oven, you know, and, and smoke started coming out of it because, you know, there's always like, like scraps of cheese and stuff left over from the, the past cooking and the, the cabin's filling up with smoke and Pete's driving. He's like, I got to roll down the window. I can't see <laughs> smoke's coming out. He, he rolls down the window. I'm like, yeah, but now you're adding drag. We're going to burn more energy. And he's like, yeah, well that Pete damn pizza oven's burning energy. We're arguing. It, it was fun. It was fun. People behind you are like that F-150 is on fire and it smells yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. But all in all, it was good. You'll see in the video, the pizza actually after like the crust and stuff burned off the pizza, it wasn't emitting too much more smoke. The only thing is it was hot and Pete's like, <laughs> right arm was burning because it was on the it was on the, the armrest between the two of us and he's like he's like i think i got third degree birds in my arm <laughs> so in your truck kyle you had your dad with you so yeah. but no pizza no pizza making no no we no. we're not we're not uh, creative like that so did you make your dad drive the whole way no no we switched on and off <laughs> he okay. drove he drove probably 60 percent of it though he really okay. did a lot. Yeah, I mean, we used Blue Cruise most of the way as well, hands-free, uh, an amazing system. I mean, I think out of the the 1,002 miles that we put on our truck, we wanted it to be a 1,000-mile race. Mm -hmm. We probably were hands-free 925 miles of it, something like that. I mean, we, really wow. a big That's portion. A how how uh, how often do the nags come on that? Or are there nags? No, because it's hands-free. Hands -free. You just watch the road. Right. So you're just going to sit there. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to touch the wheel. There's no nags or nothing. Right. It no, nags if you look away. Right, right, right. And it's pretty quick nagging. That was bothering Pete because he's looking over to for me with stuff. And as soon as you look away from the road, it's like, bam, bam, right. bam, 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 bam. It's, you have to stay focused on the road, which you kind of should. But I think yeah. it should just give you that extra, like a second more because it really is pretty quick. It, you know, when you look away, it's, it's, it's nagging you. Yeah, live in the comments. When you watch Patrick's and, and Liv's road trip videos, um, and by the way, go watch their over again, over an hour long. I think it's a long one uh, where they go and try out uh, their new adapter and trying out the superchargers. Um, it's great because they got the camera on the windscreen and, you know, Liv's looking at the camera and stuff and they're having a conversation. Normally, you know, you would sometimes look at the person next to you and make eye contact occasionally. Like Patrick's just there staring at the road. Like it's it, once you notice it, like don't take your eyes off the road because the car will nag. Um, <laughs> he's not being rude. He's just driving the car. Well, but it, it's pretty nice. Like, obviously, I was looking around, changing the radio station whatever one does while driving a case <laughs> in the middle of the night and like it just go ding 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 and then like even if you just yeah. let it go it, it like does it's like warning emergency thing and then it lets you put it right back on so it really right. was it was amazing amazing the, the lightning i have turned into a such a lightning fanboy after this trip i've right. always appreciated the lightning you know the maki -E and i never got along perfectly well the gt yes but not the standard one um 
and GT performance specifically with the, the, the upgraded damper, but uh, the lightning and I have become best friends. And, uh, you know, we have all of the electric trucks here right now in the driveway, uh, you know, Silverado, Cybertruck, Light, I, lightning is the one I'm jumping in every time. I love that truck. It's so good for just cruising for the big open highways. Damn. And it requires zero effort to road trip it too, because they just kind of hold full power to 80%. There's no benefit to unplug before 80%. In fact, you're at a benefit to arrive to a charger deeper into the pack where you have higher pack voltage to get a bigger boost. And so it's the most mindless electric vehicle I've ever road trip because you it drives itself on Blue Cruise hands-free. You charge it till it hits 80%. You don't even think about it. It takes a while. It needs way faster charging, but you just charge it to 80 and you go. And then whatever charger you make it to next, hopefully you're there at a bit high... Uh, high state of charge. I've really, yeah, I can niggle about some software stuff. I can niggle about, I can find faults with any car or any truck, but damn, they nailed this thing. And it was my first road trip in a lightning and it's so good. And and that, the fact that it has that flat charging curve took away another, let's say, uh, something that Kyle and I could be um, tested against each other. Like, like, you know, Kyle's charging strategy was better than mine or my, you know, because it, you know, the speed was limited. The charging is like, it's a flat line. You don't have to say, really figure it out. Other than what Kyle pointed out, a little bit of an advantage getting there with a higher state of charge because pack voltage is higher. You're going to pull more power, but that's such a minute difference. And, you know, if you get to the charging station at a higher state of charge, it means you drove slower. So, you know, you're getting there later. So that kind of, took it away. It really was flat out, you know, Electron America sites versus Tesla sites. And um, I thought it was great. I thought it was compelling. And I think you guys, I think you guys are going to love to watching both videos and seeing the different perspectives from, uh, from, from both sides. But, but charging the F-150 Lightning at superchargers, no issues, no problems, the same power, but the same amount of time or how, how does it differ? Um, yeah, so uh, well, you'll see it all in the videos, and we'll do a dedicated episode on this uh, yeah, yeah. probably okay, yeah. sometime this week. We right. had, yeah, I had a couple niggles with superchargers, little issues there, uh, and then also the charge port location turned out to be a way bigger deal than I had been imagining in my head. We rolled up to one station, the pictures on Twitter, where thankfully there was one spot open, and thankfully it was all the way on the right, um, but we had to off-road the truck to get it to interface. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was really, um, uh, yeah, it was funny. My dad almost took out the supercharger. <laughs> he, he, he was going wide open throttle, full brakes, trying to get it onto a curve. And I'm like, dad, oh. just go smooth. And he was like spinning the tires to get it up. And, and, you know, then he goes real quick and it locks up the brakes before he runs over the supercharger. I'm like, this is, we cannot be the first ones using this network and knock out a supercharger. That would be the <laughs> worst story. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely supercharger network you have there. Shame yeah. if anything would ever happen to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we didn't damage anything. It all worked out well. And uh we my dad and I had such a blast. It was great spending time with him. And yep. uh yeah, he was he was a trooper. He started to really understand the you know out of spec way of doing these tests. At first, mm -hmm. the first leg, he was just chilling. He's like kind of glancing at his speed. And then by the end of it, I got him locked in and fully focused on the the task, which is get to the charger as efficiently as possible, get it plugged in, run mm -hmm. back to the truck, no time to waste. And uh, he started to get there. Right on. So um, you have a new vehicle. This, this, I saw some pictures on social media. Uh, do you want to talk about that at all yet? Or Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. So Kyle, tell us about your, your new vehicle. Yeah. I bought a cyber truck. Surprise. I'm, I, mean, I, I'm shocked, but I'm not shocked because I kind of knew, but still. So yeah. what's, you were what's one of the very, I mean, us, whatever, who here, we were like the only ones I ever told. I didn't right. know if it was going to work or if it was going to go through. So Tesla had this referral program, Accelerated Delivery, and our video goes up right after this podcast explaining how that all happened. But essentially, okay. we could use 30,000 points and they guaranteed delivery in 45 days. Wow. And I think it was only... 14 days in our case. It was really quick. And um, yeah, just, just picked it up yesterday afternoon uh, from Tesla in Jacksonville. They were amazing, really great team. And the truck is uh, interesting is. Um, so, so trimotor. 
Trimotor, yep, hell yeah, mm -hmm. gotta gotta go full send, full cyber beast. So cyber what's beast. Uh, what's the difference then from the ones that we've seen already? We've seen those loads of YouTube videos are out there on Cyber Truck, but what's the Cyber Beast difference? Where's your twenty grand gone? Yeah, well, um, an extra motor essentially. <laughs> it's a right? it's a dual <laughs> a dual rear induction system. So you have Ooh. two induction motors in the back, and then a permanent magnet up front. Um, you know, same steer by wire. The only other change is the Alcantara dash, which is, you know, microfiber suede, if we're going to yeah. be technical, um, is kind of nice. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. Um, ultimately the reason I got the, the tri motor, I had the choice, uh, and a, there's not that many out there. So it makes for more unique content. Of course, we have to justify this by YouTube. Um, right. and, and thankfully we're in a position where we're able to do that. Not everyone is. So we're really lucky. Um, and so I thought, okay, let's, let's go try motor. We already have a plaid. We, we go, you know, full send on these things. It, it wasn't that much of a range hit over the dual motor. If it was like a 30 or 40 mile range difference, I probably would have gotten the dual motor because a lot of our testing is long distance towing, road tripping, those types of things. But there's very little penalty because both motors are induction. They pretty much get shut off in the rear. Um, so very little penalty doing that. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I don't know. I was just, if we're going to do it, let's go full send. That's how mm -hmm. I am. So, you know, we, we went full send and, uh, I, we've already put 200 miles on it. I think yesterday, maybe 300 now I got to look and wow. it's, so I drove the ones in Austin for our initial testing and those were really fun, but, uh, driving it around here is crazy because I think in Austin people were not used to seeing Cybertruck, but it wasn't as crazy. Driving this thing in Florida is dangerous, Be not because of the truck, but it's because <laughs> everyone around you pays zero attention to their path of trajectory and they just start driving off the road and because they're looking at you and it's crazy. Jordan we, just experienced we that. We nearly saw 10 accidents on our way to Starbucks this morning and none of them would have been my fault for my driving. It was just there, everyone else just stopping. Like in the middle of the street, just like stopping to get a photo. And it's like, you're in a <laughs> lane. You got to keep going. <laughs> but Jordan did crash it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I hit Already? He hit a flower pot with the door, right. opening the door. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that shouldn't hurt it, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Gonna be, I mean, yeah. people are shooting their cyber trucks with, with freaking automatic weapons. And so I think a flower pot shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, um, yeah. Totally. So are you going to wrap it? Are you going to just shoot it? Or what's, what's gonna, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep I mean, the stainless I, steel? Yes, I want to shoot it, but I don't think people will care. I, I just want to shoot it for my own enjoyment, not for like <laughs> right. YouTube. I kind of don't want to put it on YouTube. I think we might even get demonetized. I don't know. We have not to possibly. look at the regulations. Yeah. Um, there, are, but, there's, there is some video of people doing that out there already. Yeah, I mean, but... as an enthusiast, I, yeah, I'll use it for target practice. That's awesome. But so like, that's great. But ultimately, yes, I do want to wrap it eventually. I, I do not like the stainless, I've decided. Uh, the truck is covered in fingerprints. You can't leave bugs on it. It's the world's toughest truck, but don't leave an insect on it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's just crazy. Uh, so, you know, th there's a lot of good and bad going on here. But uh, Colton begged me and asked me to keep it stainless for at least six months. So okay. he's going to run okay. a lot of experiments for our detailing channel. I'm not going to clean the bugs off of it. We're going to kind of do everything wrong. And okay. uh, then we will probably do a wrap. I haven't decided what to do yet. I, I was thinking about getting a Maytag refrigerator badge <laughs> and putting it on the hood. Um, oh, Francie's offering. Yeah, Francie, oh. it's, Francie really has way more skills than I do when it comes to her aim. Oh, oh, she if you want to be in the safest she place should. possible when I'm shooting, stand in front of the target. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a shotgun uh, pro. Was she some sort of like a pro skeet shooter or something? Yeah, she was. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Right on. Uh, so when you wrap it, do you have any ideas of the uh, color you want to do? I've seen some really interesting ones out there. They really transformed the truck. Yeah, I've got, got ideas for sure. Okay. You want to share them? Right no. Now? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, but we had, had a lot of fun and, uh, you know, the truck's great. Re really happy that we were able to do this referral delivery. Ultimately, we have a full video coming, so we don't need to spend much time on this, but maybe the viewers will give them a sneak preview. We haven't announced it yet, but I have arranged here in Florida, leaving tomorrow morning and Dominic's coming with us, a Rivian R1T, a Silverado EV, a F-150 Lightning and our Cybertruck. And you can imagine what we're going to do with all of those, which is drive across the country as fast as we can. 
and see who makes it to San Diego first. We have 12 people um, and we're going to go send it. Yep. This is going to be a crazy weekend. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> who, I, I honestly think whoever's driving the Silverado is just going to win. Who is in the Silverado, by the way? Uh, I don't remember. Justin, bearded Tesla guy. I, we may have to move some stuff around, <laughs> but we have to uh, By the way, it's not like a cannonball. There are speed limit caps, so don't send yeah. the cops out looking for us. We're only right, going, yeah. you know, just a few over the speed limit. It's more, it's like a race to Vegas style video where we look at range, efficiency, and charging performance all together. We will not be live streaming it uh, because there's four trucks with four different positions and um, yeah, it's just, we uh, actually live streams will kill the performance of our uh, video that just is going to go up tomorrow on our lightning race. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, no live streams here, but Jordan and Max will have a great time editing this one from, you know, 12 different cameras. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I feel so, I've got my GoPro, uh, cards. No GoPros out. allowed. No GoPros? No, because they don't sync up on the GPS timestamps. You have to oh. use your iPhone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem then. That's good. So I'll leave those here. That leaves, leaves, well, leaves more of them in my bag. Bring them with you just in case. You oh, know, okay. in case iPhone I'll, fails. I'll or always something. have a GoPro. I'll always have a GoPro on you. Okay. Thank you for I that. Muted. I'm, I'm Kyle, a newbie. Nate, Nathan asked a good question. What, the Lightning, will you be? Will the Lightning driver be able to stop at any charger? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. Rivian should be. access for, I don't think I should say exactly how long, but it's not, not, for this trip and same with GM. They are not ready for this trip either. Both are soon. I talked right. to GM about it. I'm like, can we get so you know supercharger access for this truck? First of all, I don't know how they will charge on superchargers because they probably can't go into their double pack voltage. And I've never charged one on a 400 volt charger that can dump as much current as you want. So pretty much the uh the Rivian can use Rivian Adventure Network chargers. It's whatever you can whatever do you can to charge. get your truck there the fastest. Yeah. Right. So well, that's an advantage for the lightning because they can go yeah. anywhere, you know, absolutely. That's for well, but I you know, mean, I mean, the, the, the cyber truck can the... also, if, oh no, it, you can't use the adapter. You tried to use the adapter, right? Doesn't it not, does it not work? The, uh, the, uh, uh other adapter, the cyber truck does not, uh, support CCS charging yeah, right. on, uh, it does support CCS charging on news charger. So it does support it. Um, but you need a charger that like interoperates with it. There's some bugs and stuff that need to be worked out. So you can't, you can't there rely, you can't try that. that. Yeah. Is that no, new charger? EA. Is that new charger on the route? Uh, it N- is NX- NXU. I should spell that out so people know what we're talking about. <laughs> it, it actually might be on the route, but it is off the highway a bit. Okay, so somebody could Probably benefit. Not worth it. It's what? How many? How many kilowatts is that thing? Seven hundred. Yeah, but no truck can take that. So you right, know, any right, EA right. station can max out the trucks. But if there's a line, I don't know. I have not looked at the route, to be honest. I think Jordan has. But if we're going through, you know, if the EA station's full, it could be a backup. Yeah. And it charged it. It peaked at 327, didn't it? So, yeah, it's not bad. I I think the quickest way is just stay on I-10, right? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Because it actually goes, and that goes right by my house. Like, like if we cut down some trees, I could see it right there. So if you see four electric trucks, just driving gently through traffic because we are stuck to speed limits, basically. Yes. Then, um, yeah, mind your business. Don't bother us. We're trying to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really worried. I'm, I'm really worried about the cyber truck. I'm driving the cyber truck with oh, Drew right. and my friend Brandon Teslaplex. And mm-hmm. um, I think we are at a major disadvantage because I went to Bucky's yesterday and charged it. And I've <laughs> learned that is the biggest mistake you can ever do. No. Because there was about 4,000 people crowding around the truck. I couldn't move. I'm like, if I wanted to unplug and leave, I couldn't. It was wow. crazy. So I think we're really at a disadvantage with the Cybertruck. That's so right. funny because so many people who have a Cybertruck uh, love that side of it. Like They're not seeking fame, but they enjoy talking to people, whether they're in the Tesla community or just kids that want their photo with it. Whereas if you see Kyle driving a Cybertruck and he's in a hurry, he's not being rude. He just has to go. So. Right. I, mean, to go. Like, I love talking to people. Yesterday was fun. We had all the time in the world. I was chatting there. I was, you know, that truck was charging way more than I needed it to. Um, but, <laughs> but to be honest, like on this race, we, we have to have Drew is going to be our designated conversation ender. He's going to nice. be, because yeah, nice. I, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> conversation just, ender. Just, just run over oh, everyone. Isn't right. this made for like the apocalypse? The yeah. cyber truck, you know, he like you know, just, 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 just run, just plow through the crowd and keep going. 
Yeah. Thank you. So I'm really uh, looking forward to this. It's going to be a fun weekend. And uh, yeah, I want to get our lightning videos up. Uh, yeah, I got to edit them today. We're going to probably stay up later than I should doing that. And um, this weekend's going to be wild. Yeah, it's going to be great. And then, of course, we have, you know, we have all the trucks. So we're going to do a uh, next few weeks of crazy truck testing. I have uh, Chevy's actually sending us the Silverado 4WT with the giant battery. Okay. Wow. The, yes. this one's, the one you have now is a 3WT. So I have it's a work truck with a 20 module battery instead of the 24 modules. Correct. Yep, exactly. Then this still charges. I got 310 kilowatts on it yesterday at uh, the Mercedes uh, CCS uh, charge point chargers at Bucky's. It was great. Bucky's is awesome because those Mercedes chargers are all 400 kilowatt chargers and they're oh, right wow. off the highway. And I think Tom missed one on this trip. You should have stopped there instead of EA, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, saw, I, I saw them at the one. That... I didn't want to. I, the EA was. Well, we won't get into it. The air was working for me, so yeah, that's why yeah. I stuck with it. But I think oh, you're like three mile off the highway thing at the end. Um, that you could have just hit a Bucky's. Yeah, you know, I I I, we, I was thinking about exactly where to stop, and I was weighing yeah. the 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 you know advantages of knowing what you have versus yeah. what if it doesn't work. You know yeah. that, that you know so. Uh, that that was the decision that we made. So, but it's a good it's a good move that you feel like. EA was that reliable for you, which it was, uh, and that yeah. you had full confidence in them. And I think that shows, okay, maybe there's some improvements that have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone will see in the video, um, you know, and I've, I've never been um, overly enthusiastic about my Electrify America experiences. I've had mixed results and on long road trips, it seems like I always have an, an issue. And I really thought that was going to be the deciding factor in this race. But this, we made five charging stops in this race. Everyone was perfect, not just good, perfect. So I got to give Electrify America props on this. The um, I couldn't have had a better charging experience um, uh, on on those five stops. So that was a surprise. Awesome. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to actually getting into. I don't know if I'm, I'm not driving the uh, Silverado, but I'm really super curious about it. I feel like it's there's. It's an untold story, you know. There's, they've got, they've had the work truck out for some while now, but you don't really hear about it. You don't really see them anywhere. It's like it's kind of like lost. It might as well be lost in space somewhere. To, to yeah, me, but to I saw one at here. the Chevy dealer in Orlando yesterday, and okay. then Hertz has a bunch, and okay. uh, so you can go rent one at like most Hertz locations now. I, I should check to see if they have. I, I suspect Tallahassee doesn't have that option, uh, but Tampa right? does. Okay, yeah, that's only five hours. Yeah, drive. just drive on down there. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what else we got to do? Uh, we have a few, few little no, you know, news bites that. So maybe we can just really quickly, you know, kind of interesting that the. Uh, I I got to get our Cybertruck video up, so I, I'll leave you with Jordan. But it, it's been good chatting with all of you today, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be listening in. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll need you back here shortly too. Um, right. So uh, actually, Karma. Speaking of Fisker, Karma's first EV uh, promises 250 miles of range. Karma, the original Fisker, remember from back in the day, they've they're still around somehow, and they've produced their first all electric car. It's still based on the original Karma chassis, that platform, I guess. And you know, it's hard to really say much. There's not really, it's called the Gisera, and. You know, I don't, there's not really a whole lot to say about it because it's a very small company at this point. It's almost like a boutique coach builder. And we don't even know what their capabilities is as far as production and all that. But uh, so uh, more interesting news, I think, generally for everybody is that the Nissan has enhanced the, enhanced the starting price of the 2024 Nissan Aria to 39.590. So they've taken the Nissan area price and chopped a whole bunch off of it as much as, what is it, up to $6,000 on some trims and 3,600 on other trim levels. So that makes the area, which I have always thought was a little bit overpriced. So that brings it into a more competitive space, I, I believe now. I don't know, Tom, do you have any thoughts on, on the area pricing? Not really. It's okay. good that it's lower. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, but yeah. it still it still tops out at fifty five grand yeah. though for the E four horse, as I'm not meant to say, but the E four all wheel drive top spec, and that fifty five is a lot to drop on a Nissan. You've got to really want the area. Right. It's a tough space yeah. that that space it, that it competes in. And, I yeah, mean, it's, it's no surprise they're not selling a lot of them. It's a nice vehicle, but beautiful. That's a, that's tough competition. 
Right. Um, speaking of Nissan, though, the Leaf has regained its tax credit eligibility. Um, so I don't know if, if people love it. It's not the, really the hottest selling car. It's like probably one of the oldest EVs kind of out there. And it is. It was one of the very first EVs and it's yeah. still for sale. And now it's eligible again for its tax credit. So that's quite a deal. Probably in the, what, the around $23,000 with the tax credit, 22, something that's a, that's a pretty great deal. Um, it, it's definitely below 25. I can't remember the exact price, but I saw the news this week and it's definitely below. It's the cheapest EV, new EV right. on sale in the U S and it's yes, below 25. Certainly without the credit, the last price in my head was like 28,000 and something. Wow. Okay. So it could be down to below 22. Well, remember it's only half the tax credit. Oh, okay. On the lease. Not, it's not the full seven, five. Right. But there's not a whole lot down there now. Well, I mean, there's no. probably still some Chevy bolts out there. On, on be some twenty, what is it? Twenty twenty three model year bolts that are unsold. Um, it's probably not many. Probably not down many. to about a if thousand get or so one. now. If you can There's get one, go get one. Still, yeah, yeah, not a lot, but yeah. Uh, the Honda. Speaking of the federal tax credit, the Honda Prologue now officially qualifies for the seventy five hundred federal tax credit. We talked about the the Prologue a couple of weeks ago. It's built on the GM Altium platform, similar to mm. the Blazer, I believe. It's the but maybe toned down styling. And uh, Kyle has a great video on that on the spec channel. Uh, the other bit of news was the Gravity Mobility is a charging mobility. They have, I don't know, they have charging, they have cars. I'm not exactly sure. We're going to talk to these guys and see what's going on with that company, actually. But they opened, they made some uh, splash in the news last week where they opened up, a, they say the fastest EV charger in the US open to the public in New York City. I believe it was a. Uh, I don't even have the number off the top of my head. How many kilowatts it puts out is 500 kilowatts, right? But this, right. but the, as we were saying, the the company new NXU has one like 750 kilowatt charger down there in, in the in Texas or Arizona. I'm not even sure where. I think it's Arizona. Uh, so it's technically not the, the fastest one, but I believe these guys have like network ambitions. So we may see more of those coming. But uh, yeah, we're going to dig into that hopefully on the, this week and find out more. I mean, that's all I have. That's a good. That's a good week. Yeah. We're pushing all right. an hour and a half. So. Okay. So I guess that brings us to the end of our show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, nice to see so many of you in the in the audience today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or get in touch with us on the social media platform of your choice. Don't forget if you like the show. Please give us a thumbs up, click subscribe, tap that bell icon for notifications because we'll be popping up midweek with uh, we have our battery bargain series and we'll have some midweek episodes coming up real soon. Um, thank you all very much again for joining us and we'll see you again very soon. Ciao.